Convert the line integral to an ordinary integral with respect to the parameter and then evaluate. So here we have the line integral over c of x minus z ds, where c is a helix defined by this vector valued function over t. So we lucked out here, we can make a little note to ourselves that c is already parameterized. Hip hip hooray. So since c is already parameterized, we're ready to go. So we'll make a little note here that our curve C is defined by the vector valued function in three dimensions, x of t, y of t, z of t. And again, it's this helix defined by 5 cos of t, 5 sine of t, t. And this is where t is an element of the closed interval from minus 2 pi to 0. So since we already have that parameterization, we can go right ahead and compute the magnitude. So we want to find the magnitude of our tangent vector. So our tangent vector here is going to leave us with minus 5 sine of t, 5 cosine of t, and shame on me, this is not whoop, this is not a 5. That should be a t, like it is in the given parameterization. So the derivative of t is 1. So now we can find the magnitude. So the magnitude of our tangent vector is going to be equal to the square root of negative 5 times sine of t squared, so 25 sine of t squared plus 25 cosine of t squared plus 1. So looking within that integrand here, we see we have a greatest common factor of 25. So if we were to factor that common factor of 25 out, we see Pythagorean's theorem, which we of course know goes to 1. So we can simplify our magnitude. That leaves us with the square root of 25 times 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 26. So we'll keep that in mind for when we set up our line integral. So the next thing that we want to do is rewrite the given function. And rewrite your integrand. So we'll keep in mind here our parameterization of the helix was 5 cos of t, which is the x component. We had 5 sine of t, which was the y component, and then t was our z. And we're going to use this to rewrite our given function of the integrand, f of x, y, z, which was defined as x minus z. So rewriting this or parameterizing this in terms of t, this becomes 5 cosine of t minus t. And we're ready to set up the integral and then evaluate. make sure we have enough room here. So we're ready to take our line integral, our given line integral, in terms of arc length, and convert this to its scalar valued function form So this is the conversion formula we're using. So here we started off where we were given the integral over c of x minus z ds. And we are rewriting this as the integral from minus 2 pi to 0 of 5 cosine of t minus t multiplied by the square root of 26 dt. 
So you can pull that square root of 26 out to the front. And then integrating, we have 5 cosine of t integrates to 5 sine of t minus t squared over 2, which we're now ready to evaluate from negative 2 pi to 0. So I have the square root of 26 multiplied by 5 sine of 0 minus 0 by 2 minus... 5 sine of negative 2 pi minus a negative 2 pi squared over 2. So no, sine of 0 goes to 0. Sine of negative 2 pi also goes to 0. So we have minus the square root of 26 multiplied by negative, negative, and then we have 4 pi squared by 2 which of course we can simplify. So the negative times the negative gives us a positive, and we know two goes into four two times. So this leaves us with two pi squared multiplied by the square root of 26. And this is our beautiful final answer.